But I think if John doesn't object, I think I'm going to give the talk in English because I find it a bit perturbing to have the slides in English and speak in Spanish. If that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, first of all, apologies because I, on the program, I was after Juan. <laughs> so, I was assuming that Juan would uh, set the context on the von Beckman method, but I will try my best. <clears throat> so, as an introduction, Galaxies in the local universe display a wide range of uh, stellar structures, among which bars and spirals clearly stand out, and these morphological structures have dynamical resonances associated with them, particularly the, the core rotation resonance, uh, which the uh, pattern speed of the spiral or the bar coincides with the angular speed of the material rotating. And the font beckman method is one of the methods that allow us to locate such resonances. Now my uh, idea was to not delve into details about the method and talk to you more about fangs, but um, I will try to explain the method a little bit to set the context. But first, uh, rather than fangs, let me jump back in time more than 10 years to 2011. That's me, the second on the right, and this was the summer internship at the IAC, which, which was my very first serious project in astrophysics, which was supervised by John and Juan. And um, we really had a lot of fun that summer. We traveled across the whole island, uh, made great friends, and actually many of the people that you can see here on top of the, the Teide volcano just before sunrise, have become professional astronomers. Many of them are currently engaged as professional astronomers across Europe, so this proves how successful this summer internship program at the IAC is. But uh, in addition to a lot of fun, I remember this is one of the best summers in my life, there was also time for science. And these are the slides that I presented at the IAC more than 10 years ago at the end of this summer internship. Uh, a bit nostalgic. <laughs> I started by setting the introduction, which I was planning to skip, but perhaps I can explain now a little bit more on um, how the measurements show that rotation curves in galaxies are typically flat, starting from a certain radius. That means that linear velocity is roughly constant, and therefore angular velocity needs to become increasingly larger as we move towards the outskirts of galaxies. And this is a bit paradoxical. Uh, would lead to the so-called winding pro problem. So the spirals would become more and more tightly wound. And a solution to this problem is the spiral density wave theory. Here I clearly <laughs> uh, explained a bit on epicycles and resonances. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about it. But basically one can end up having that radius where indeed the material rotates together with the pattern, whereas inwards material will overtake the pattern over time and outwards the opposite will happen. And these are related by the angular rotation curves. I also gave a bit of background on methods previously used to locate resonances, which included morphology, comparison to numerical simulations, and most famously probably the trimming Weinberg method. And then this is the actual method, at least as it was defined more than 10 years ago because there were slight, slight uh, modifications after. But basically the idea is to take a residual velocity field. So you observe the velocity of a tracer for each pixel, for example, using a fabri perot instrument on the H alpha line, and you subtract a model of the rotation. So you measure a rotation curve, you project it with proper inclination, PA, center, proper kinematic parameters, and once you subtract it, you basically have a map of streaming motions, of non-circular motions. And then at each radius, you can basically uh, draw an annulus, and over that annulus, you can see how many times there is a change in sign. This is because there is an expectation that there will be a phase reversal taking place precisely at core rotation, and also, to a lesser extent, at the inner and outer limb resonances. So basically, whenever there is a crossing from negative to positive or from positive to negative, and this is larger than your uncertainty in velocity, you count one crossing. And then you can plot this radially, so you can see how many crossings there are as a function of galactocentric radius. That's what you can see in the bottom panel. And basically, um, 
what I was assigned to do was to apply this to a sample, to a significant sample of nearby galaxies. At that point, the method had only been presented in a paper uh, that applied it to uh, a few galaxies as a sort of proof of concept. And I had the very exciting task in front of applying it to many dozens of galaxies and really testing it statistically, how well it, it works. So we used data from the GASP uh, survey, which is a Fabry-Perot instrument uh, based at the Observatoire d'Haute Provence. And these are the type of maps that we use. That's the velocity field. And this is the uh, result of subtracting the rotation model from the observed velocity field, so residual velocity, and the rotation curve on top for a specific galaxy. And for example, for this case, there had been previous measurements of the core rotation position using different methods. And basically, I showed that the points in these histograms uh, where you have big bumps, basically, where you have many crossings, indeed agree very well with the expected position of uh, resonances previously found by other methods. And we could even fit Gaussians and like this assign an uncertainty to the position of each of these resonances. For the galaxies that had previous measurements from the literature, I made a compilation of of resonance estimates from the literature and compared them one by one and came to the conclusion that the font beckman method performed extremely well, especially when we, when we compare it to kinematic methods such as streaming Weinberg or Kanzian or numerical simulations, which suggested that maybe the uh, studies based on morphology previously might have overlooked um, some of these resonances or maybe they are not as robust. This was sort of my summary and conclusions back then. And as a fun fact, uh, that uh, it's sort of a consequence of this work, of this summer internship, something that some of you might not know, is that John published an article in a non-Indo-European language, believe it or not. <laughs> That's John saying, what the hell? <laughs> and the language is Basque. So <laughs> this is an outreach article that I wrote summarizing this uh, Font Beckman method and the context on this spiral density wave theory. These are the first two pages. And in case you don't believe me, here you can see John Beckman and Joan Font as co-authors of this, of this little article. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, the, thank, thank you very, very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also produced a translation into Spanish of this article, which was published in the magazine uh, Astronomia. Um, these are the first pages. And in fact, uh, the editor, Angel Gomez Roldan, liked it very much and made it the cover of the um, magazine when it, when it got published. So just a little fun fact. And now my idea was to delve into FANGS, which I thought was what was probably going to be most useful for this audience, since I am, I think, the only person involved in FANGS in the room, but many of you work on in nearby galaxies or are interested in this. So um, this is basically what is taking most of my time, uh, the FANGS collaboration. And basically, this is a uh, an international collaboration that tries to understand the baryon life cycle in galaxies. It is the largest high resolution survey of star forming nearby galaxies so far, which with large programs on ALMA, HST, MUSE, and now also JWST, observing many dozens of nearby galaxies, and which provides us with a cloud scale view of the star formation process at a resolution of a few tens of parsecs or around 100 parsecs. And these are what our maps look like. They're really beautiful. These are the CO intensity maps. So this is the distribution of molecular gas in these nearby galaxies. And the goal of doing this is to um, try and understand the baryon life cycle in galaxies. FANGS stands for physics at high angular resolution in nearby galaxies and tries to follow the cycle from the condensation of diffuse atomic gas to form molecular clouds the collapse of these clouds to form stars, and the feedback processes associated with star formation. FANGS started as a group of, I think, 25 or 30 people and has grown almost exponentially. This is a picture from a meeting that we organized at the Royal Observatory in Madrid at OAN a few years ago. And now we have grown to have, I think, around 130 people. Uh, so it's become quite large as a collaboration. And in order, in order to understand the different steps of this baryon life cycle, in fact, we have assembled a rich multi-wavelength data set, which I'm now briefly going to present. 
The first data set that we obtained was a large program on ALMA of serving 74 nearby galaxies, which allows us to track the formation of molecular clouds and their evolution, including kinematics. Uh, I guess probably many, most of you already know this, but uh, the most abundant molecule in the universe, H2, unfortunately has no permanent dipole moment, and this makes it practically unobservable at the physical conditions of the cold ISM, and we instead use carbon monoxide as a surrogate to try and gauge where we have molecular gas in galaxies and how it moves. This uh, molecule efficiently emits at, at millimeter wavelengths and can be detected by facilities such as ALMA. Now, until around 10 years ago, this was the state of the art in terms of observing molecular gas in nearby galaxies. This is an example of M51 from the Heracles uh, survey, which observed several nearby galaxies with the IRAM 30 meter telescope with the resolutions of around half a kiloparsec to one kiloparsec. And now, and this was with IRAM 30 meter, as I was saying, now this is the revolution when you go and observe this same galaxy with an interferometer. In this case, the Plateau de Bure interferometer. This is the pause uh, survey of M51, which took as many as 200 hours just to produce this map and those, the associated kinematic maps, the cube, of this uh, iconic galaxy. And down there you can see the resolution of pores compared to the resolution of the 30 meter. Here you can resolve individual molecular clouds. Now the magic of ALMA is that you can play this game much more quickly. So this is a similar map of the galaxy M74, NGC 628, and this was produced with ALMA, and it took only two hours of main array time. The similar, uh, you know, experiment that took 200 hours with the old Plateau de Bure. So, of course, it is very tempting to say, you know, if we were granted 200 hours on ALMA, a large program, we could do 100 like this. This is exactly what we did. So, these are the, excuse me, these are um, two different classifications depending on the bar properties or spiral properties of the Thanks ALMA uh, sample, which showcases a large diversity, as, as you can see. The second ingredient uh, in the Thanks project is tracing uh, stars and feedback. So we have two large programs on HST and the VLT, which allow us to see star formation process and feedback in detail. And I'm just, just going to flash some images um, these are the kind, this is the kind of information that you can extract from these observations. These are false color images combining different optical lines from Muse. And these are probably some of the most beautiful images of nearby galaxies that one can produce from uh, the HST. And more recently, we have also obtained JWST imaging in eight bands with Miri and Nircom. We're not doing a spectroscopy, so this is just imaging, but this Images are also really stunning. And these allow us to track the distribution of dust and embedded star formation in great detail. These are some of the examples. This is NGC 1365. You can see lots of filaments that we were not able to see before with ALMA. So it's really mind blowing. It's a whole new game. In terms of sample selection, FANGS follows the star formation main sequence limited to galaxies that are close by, uh, closer than 17 megaparsec, not terribly edge on and visible to ALMA. And uh, this yields uh, around 90 galaxies, depending on how you define the selection in detail. And all of these maps, all of these data products are public. So we have mm, right now, thanks ALMA observations for 90 galaxies, thanks HST observations for 38 of those, even though that sample is likely going to grow uh, soon, 19 of those also observed by FANGS Muse and FANGS JWST, and we got a JWST proposal approved to observe all remaining galaxies of the main FANGS ALMA sample. So there's going to be public data with JWST images of all of these nearby galaxies available very soon, in the next year or so. And these are the kinds of data products that we have released, which includes really a lot of things, uh, imaging, kinematic maps, cubes, catalogues, uh, many, many things, uh, probing a lot of different physical structures in these galaxies, which you can uh, easily obtain from our webpage. And if you have any questions about that, just let me know, and I will be happy to try and assist you.
So, um, within FANGS, I've been working quite a bit on defining morphological substructures, which include all of these, and try and look at how mm, the surface densities in stellar mass, molecular gas, and um, star formation rate and the implied efficiencies change, but I'm not going to talk about this in detail. If you're interested in that, you can check out, check out that paper or ask me later. Now I'm going to focus uh, just a little bit on the kinematic data that we have in FANGS because that allow us to, allows us to apply the font Beckman method, which uh, was the title of my talk. So we have, on the one hand, velocity fields from, from CO, from ALMA, so that's one tracer that we are very interested in checking, and on the other hand, for the MUSE field of view, for FANGS MUSE, we also have stellar kinematics and um, the kinematics implied by the ionized gas, H alpha and other lines. So these would allow us to uh, test the font Beckman method applied to different tracers simultaneously for the same um, galaxies. That's something we want to work on. That's something particularly a uh, master student, Gabriel Andres James Illanes, who's currently working with John and who I'm also ha helping. Is he here? Oh, so you can stand up if you want. <laughs> so that's him. Uh, so he uh, has started working on that. I'm also helping co-supervise him a little bit. He's making great progress. I think we have hope for very interesting results coming from that. And uh, there are also five galaxies for which we proposed for GAFAS observations. Uh, I think Juan will talk probably more about GAFAS later. You have also heard a little bit about it before. And it was approved, so those are also, again, waiting to be analyzed. And there are also fabry perot observations from the Russian 6-meter telescope for other FANGS galaxies. So there are prospects to apply uh, the font Beckman method to different tracers, different instruments for this set of galaxies. So that's quite exciting. And we can also compare to the results of applying other methods to these same galaxies. Specifically, Tom Williams, who's currently a postdoc in Oxford, applied the Trim and Weinberg method to FANGS. He derived pattern speeds, and from there we can derive resonance uh, positions. And um, Marina Ruiz Garcia, who's a PhD currently working in Madrid with me, uh, is applying the torque method, uh, the method first developed by Santi Garcia Burillo, Francois Combe, and some collaborators in 2005 to obtain dynamical resonances. She actually sent me over some slides so I can briefly advertise her work. Uh, this is just a point of comparison. So basically, she's taking, um, let me see if that works, yes. She's taking a near-infrared map of the stellar mass distribution, calculating the gravitational torques implied by that mass distribution, and then uh, deriving the gravitational potential, the torques, and eventually uh, measuring how those torques act on the gas, because there is also an expected change of sign on the azimuthally weighted, um, azimuthally averaged gas-weighted torques as a function of radius, precisely at core rotation. And these are the kind of butterfly patterns that one sees when you look at torques within bars. So there are four quadrants, negative, positive, po negative, positive torques. And depending on the gas distribution, that will basically make the gas fall towards the center inside core rotation or move outwards outside. And the good news is that she's finding excellent agreement with the measurements with the font Beckman method for the galaxies that have uh, previous measurements. She can also calculate the ratio of the co-rotation radius to bar radius, and she's finding that most bars are fast, but not ultra-fast, with an average of 1.19 for this uh, fancy R value. And I will stop there. So, yep, thank you very much.